Hello friends and welcome to our third video about pets. The previous two videos had an initial setting, and that means where the story takes place, of a pet shop. Well this story, Pet Show, is set in a very different place. It's set in a neighborhood that's probably located somewhere in New York City. The protagonist in this story is named Archie, and Archie wants to enter his pet, a black cat, into the pet show. There's only a slight problem. The cat has gone missing. So, whoa! Is that the right way to look at a book? Okay, this is better. Correct orientation. All right, so this book is called Pet Show, and it is written and illustrated by Ezra Jack Keats. And he is the same author and illustrator who wrote A Letter for Amy, and A Snowy Day, both of which we have already read. So this is another fun story that he wrote that I just wanted to bring with you to bring to you today since it's also about pets. And you'll notice that the illustrations in this book are very different than the illustrations in What Pet Should I Get and A Fish Out of Water. It's more of a collage style, so it means there's lots of layers happening, and he uses a lot more colors than the other two do. And you'll also see more of his brush strokes. So he is painting <clears throat> with paint, and you can kind of see, if I zoom it in for you, the strokes that his paintbrush is making as he creates the illustrations. So it begins, Pet Show, prizes, prizes, Saturday at 11 a.m. Everyone was talking about the pet show. So here's Archie, our protagonist, and he is pointing to the pet show. So we know that he's seen what's going to happen. And these are his friends, and they're talking about it, too. The kids told each other about the pets they would bring. Matt said he would bring ants. Have you guys seen ants? I actually have a lot of ants in my house that my granny was always trying to kill because she didn't like the ants getting in the sugar. But I actually like ants, and they're the only pet I have right now. <laughs> so that's what Matt's going to bring. I'm going to bring my mouse, bragged Roberto. What are you going to bring, Archie? The cat? Uh-huh, said Archie. So Archie's decided that the cat is the pet for him to bring. The next day, so the previous day was Friday, and now it's the new day, Saturday. The next day, they all got ready for the pet show. Where's the cat? Archie called. Anyone see the cat? Archie and Willie looked in the cat's favorite hangouts while Peter and Susie searched up and down the street. So here is Willie, the dog, and he is trying to help Archie find the cat. But the cat is not in the garbage can. Hmm. They're all helping him look. Archie's mother came to the window. Where can that cat be? he asked. You know how independent he is, Archie. You never know when to expect him. So if you're independent, it means you want to do things by yourself in your own way, and you don't need other people to watch you very closely. And so Archie's cat is independent, which means... The cat can go wherever it wants, and so it's not available when Archie needs it. And this is what Archie says, But I expect him now. It is time for the pet show. Maybe he's inside somewhere. Archie ran into the building. And I love how Ezra Jack Keats has illustrated a cat on the wall, kind of in chalk, almost like a little bit of graffiti on the wall. After a while, he came to the window. I can't find him. I looked all over the place. 
You better start without me. Gee, we're sorry, Archie, said Peter. So long, said Susie. They got to the entrance. That's where you go in or enter the show. A lot of people were already there. Just then, Roberto's mouse took off. Willie, the dog, chased the mouse. Roberto chased Willie because that is his mouse. Peter chased Roberto and Susie chased Peter. And the show started. And it's already off to quite a start. The problem for Archie is that he doesn't have his cat to show off. And the problem for Roberto is he's about to lose his mouse. Line up your pets, please, the judges called. They walked up and down, looking carefully at every pet and asking, how old is your pet? And what's your pet's name? Everyone got a prize for something. There was the noisiest parrot, the handsomest frog, the friendliest fishes, the yellowest canary, the busiest ants, the brightest goldfish, the longest dog, the fattest mouse, the softest puppy, the slowest turtle, and many more. So many pets are getting prizes. But Archie, Archie wasn't able to find his cat. How can he participate in the pet show? As the last prize was awarded, that means they're giving out prizes. They're awarding them to all of the people who participated. Someone shouted, look, here comes Archie. There he is. Hello, you're just in time, a judge said. What's in that bag? My pet. May I see it, please? At that moment, the cat showed up. Oh, problem solved. Archie now has his cat that he can enter into the show. The other judge called out, a blue ribbon to the nice lady for the cat with the longest whiskers. Wait a second. That's Archie's cat, and this lady is the one who's getting the prize. Oh, no. Before anyone could say anything, he pinned a blue ribbon on the old woman and came back to Archie. So the woman, the old woman, she got the blue ribbon that should have been Archie's because this cat, this very independent cat, is actually Archie's cat. But Archie doesn't say anything. Instead, he thinks of a different idea. What kind of pet have you got in that jar? A germ, answered Archie. Hmm, what's your germ's name? Archie thought for a moment. Al, he said. Do you guys know what a germ is? It's another name for like a bug or a virus or bacteria that's on your fingers and it's why you wanna wash your hands a lot so that you don't get sick. So he's got a germ in a jar. And I am sure there are germs in that jar. The only problem is you can't see them and you can't hear them. So what kind of prize do you think these judges are going to award Al the germ? The judges whisper to each other. They're looking. They're looking at the jar that has the germ named Al. A blue ribbon for Al, the quietest pet in the show, the judges announced. So germs don't make any noise. And so Archie gets his own ribbon. As everyone was leaving, the old woman came over to Archie. He's really your cat, isn't he? She said. You should have the ribbon. So the old woman is, have, is uh, displaying the ribbon pinned onto her coat, but she recognizes that it's not her cat because now the cat, the independent cat, is over by Archie. And so she's like, ugh, 
I made a mistake. This isn't my cat. It's okay, Archie said. You keep it. And he ran to join his friends. They passed the old woman on their way home. Thank you for the ribbon, she called. Archie smiled. It looks good on you. See you around. See you around, she said. And there goes Archie back into the house through the red door. So Pet Shop by Ezra Jax Keats is considered realistic fiction. If it's realistic fiction, it doesn't mean that it's real because fiction means it's made up. But realistic fiction means that it could have happened. The A Fish Out of Water story written by Helen Palmer, that is a fictional story that could not have happened. Fish really don't get that big. But Ezra Jack Keats' story about Archie and his cat could have happened. The setting is real. It's set somewhere in a city. The characters are people and pets, and the pets aren't able to talk, and they're definitely not a zizzer zazzer zuz, which you'll get to meet in a future read aloud. It's a Dr. Seuss character, by the way. And so it's really a believable story. It didn't really happen, but it could have, and that's why it's considered realistic fiction. I hope you enjoyed it, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye, friends! <laughs>